Epoxides can be opened under both acidic and basic conditions. In this video, we'll examine the cleavage of the epoxide under basic conditions. The net result of this two-step reaction is that a CO bond is broken, a nucleophile is added to the carbon, and a proton is added to the oxygen. Before we go any further, I want to pause to note that this is a topic that is treated differently by different organic chemistry textbooks. So if you're watching this video and you are using a different textbook, it is very wise to pause to make sure that the treatment here matches that in your textbook before going any further. The reaction utilizes a strong nucleophile. Strong nucleophiles are often basic, and that's the reason why this reaction is called epoxide opening in base. A strong nucleophile will attack one of the two epoxide carbons from the direction opposite the cleaving carbon-oxygen bond. This is an SN2-like process. The carbon-oxygen bond cleaves, alleviating the ring strain inherent in an epoxide. And this explains why the alkoxide, the O-, if you will, the oxyanion, is a leaving group here. Normally, we do not consider an alkoxide to be a good leaving group. However, in this case, the leaving group ability is offset by the release of a great deal of ring strain. In step two of the reaction, the alkoxide is protonated when aqueous acid is added to the reaction mixture. When the epoxide is unsymmetrical, the regiochemistry of the nucleophilic attack in step one becomes a concern. We can understand how this regiochemistry plays out by considering the mechanism of the reaction. We can be guided by the fact that this is an SN2-like reaction. And SN2 reactions are sensitive to steric hindrance. They occur more slowly at centers that are more hindered. Consequently, the nucleophilic attack occurs at the less sterically hindered epoxide carbon. Only one carbon of the epoxide is mechanistically involved in the transformation. Therefore, only the stereochemistry of that center can be altered during the reaction. In the example below, there is a stereocenter in the molecule, but it is not the site of reaction and is therefore unaltered. In step one, this SN2-like reaction takes place at the less sterically hindered epoxide carbon. In the example shown, that is a primary center. There are no mechanistic arrows involving the stereocenter itself. Therefore, there can be no change in configuration at that center. Notice that the protonation step, step two, also does not involve the stereocenter, which is carbon rather than oxygen. Again, this means that there is no change in stereochemistry during this particular reaction. However, in this next example, the reaction takes place at the stereocenter, leading to an inversion of configuration. In step one, the SN2-like process occurs at the less sterically hindered epoxide carbon, which in this case is the secondary carbon, which is a site that is preferable for attack when compared with the alternate tertiary center. As in any other SN2 reaction, the nucleophile attacks opposite the leaving group, 
so inversion is observed. During the second step of the reaction, there is no further change in stereochemistry because protonation does not involve the stereocenter. The following specific example of epoxide opening in basic conditions has both regiochemical and stereochemical ramifications. The substituted epoxy cyclohexane is treated with sodium cyanide followed by aqueous acid to yield a single stereoisomer of the hydroxy nitrile product. Of course, mechanism helps us to understand why that single product is observed. So let's examine the mechanism. First of all, we have to consider the regiochemistry. SN2 takes place at the less hindered center. In this case, that's the secondary center rather than the tertiary center. Furthermore, from a stereochemical standpoint, the attack occurs opposite the breaking CO bond, which results in an inversion of configuration. By the end of step one, both the regiochemistry and stereochemistry are set and no further changes occur during step two when the alkoxide is simply protonated. In summary, strong nucleophiles are often also bases. Therefore, epoxide opening with a strong nucleophile is referred to as epoxide opening in basic conditions. The reaction is akin to SN2, so it occurs at the less hindered epoxide carbon when the epoxide is unsymmetrical. And when stereochemistry is relevant, there is inversion of configuration at the center undergoing reaction.